Okay, let's have a look at my iCloud setup. I have Designer, Photo and Publisher. Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher, to be exact. Now, both of all of these, all three of these apps, both of them, all three of these apps create their own directories on iCloud. And you can see Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher there. Now, what happens when you save your document? Let's take Affinity Photo. It saves the document to Affinity Photo. Now, that's an Affinity Photo type document you can see there. But what happens when you export a photo or save a copy? When you save a copy, you are actually saving an Affinity Photo document. It only changes to a JPG or PNG, SVG, whatever, when you export. Now, don't try and export those images into your Affinity Photo directory, for example. This is why I've created an AF photo, short for Affinity Photo, but quite distinguishable, a directory called that, to put my exports in. And you can see I've got JPG, PNG, um, etc. in those. Why have I got this over here? Because that's the Affinity Photo directory, AF. That's the one that's automatically created if you decide you're going to use iCloud, of course. And there's all AF documents there. Type AF.AF photo. And there's one there. Copy AF photo. AF photo. And there we go. Now, it's very odd that some of them have AF photo after them. And some of them don't. But that's still an Affinity Photo document. document. Why don't they have... Um, why don't they have the things after them? I have no idea. That's one I haven't worked out yet. Size modified. Comments iCloud version date added. And I can't put a type in there. Never mind. Kind. Doesn't matter how you sort them. They're still Affinity Photo documents. Date modified, that's the last time that one was modified. AP, it still opens up in Affinity Photo. So who knows why some of them have that and some of them don't. I suspect, and this has just come to me, that this is because some are created on the desktop, which we're looking at here, some are created on the iPad. One's on the desktop, may have that, ones on the iPad may not. This is some experimentation I'll have to do at a later date. It's obviously not a problem because the thing reads both of them. And that's all there is to it. Keep those directories clean and separate. Keep your documents there and they'll be easy to find because what Affinity doesn't do when you bring the images up or the thumbnails up on your opening screen, it doesn't tell you what sort of document it is. So you could be opening an AF photo document, you could be trying to open a PNG document. So keep them separate and you don't have this problem. Let's have a look at AF photo. There's a copy I made, a copy I made. There's one with AF photo. Let's open it up. There's Affinity Photo. Now, over here you can see I've got the various layers. It's definitely an AF Photo image. We'll just close that. We don't need that up there anymore. Minimize that, and we're back there. There's an Affinity Photo document. That's probably a blank by the look of that. Completely blank. Let's have a look. Completely blank document, just one pixel layer. We'll close that. Don't need to keep it open. Minimise that. 
Now we looked at the AF photo one. <clears throat> There's an outline text, AF photo, preset book cover, YouTube Affinity iPad. Now there's one that doesn't have AF photo after it. Let's have a quick look at that. Same difference, you see. It's got the layers. But who knows? I've got an idea that one was created on the iPad. I, I seem to remember creating it on the iPad. And there you can see it's got iPad after it and no AF photo word after it. So the iPad doesn't put .af photo, the desktop does. So that's how you can tell them apart perhaps. That's all there is to it for this little exercise.